Heidi ho folks, it's Northern Rides, and wow, it has been a long time since I've made one of these building videos. And it's for a good reason. I have recently been to Europa Park. If you've been following my channel, you would know that because I've been posting almost nothing but Europa Park. And I warned you in a video before I went uh, that it was going to be pure Europa Park be, uh, like after I came home. And it was. I've done a review of all 13 roller coasters now. I've done my countdown and I've had a, a few normal uh, planet coaster POVs uh, in between just to kind of, uh, you know, at least keep the interest of that uh, target audience as well, I suppose. And now we're finally back to the normal schedule with uh, one normal video, then a planet coaster video, then a normal video, then a planet coaster video. Um, and in this. Uh, video here. We are building an intimate prefabricated wooden coaster. I've wanted to make this for a while and I thought it, it, it turned out pretty good. Uh, it, it loses a bit of pacing somewhere, but I ended up just making real sharp airtime hills, which you will see in the end. Uh, but this kind of uh, roller coaster is very interesting because it's just like uh, any normal uh, traditional wooden coaster really except it's not at all uh, first off the building method that's what makes it prefabricated is that the pieces are made in a factory instead of at the at the scene I suppose um, basically they're cut it like they're made like steel coasters essentially they're made at the factory and then they're tra the pieces are put together at the site like with a steel coaster and, and also the uh, the cross beams in between the tracks, there are a lot fewer of those. The track looks a little bit different than a traditional wooden track, but I couldn't get that in Planet Coaster, but it's okay, it's, it's, that's just really a detail. Uh, also, these coasters are known for having a shit ton of ejector airtime uh, compared to some of the other uh, kind of, of wooden coasters that are a lot more about the speed and the out and back uh, layout and maybe just the floater airtime. These can be very intense and they can be very smooth most of the time. So there are four of these kinds of coasters in real life already. There is Colossus Kampf der Giganten in Heidi Park, then there's El Toro, everyone knows El Toro in Six Flags Great Adventure, then there's T Express in South Korea and there's Balder in Lisebad. And um, I'm kind of surprised there aren't any more of these because these are these are really good roller coasters and one hasn't been built in I don't know my guess is 10 years 11 years I think it is I think the last one was built in 2008 and that was T Express uh, I could be wrong about that Pre please correct me if I'm wrong because I'm not gonna check up on it <laughs> um, but anyway I want I really wanted to build this and the start is very similar to both El Toro and Colossus they both start out with these two huge camelback ejector hills, and that's the same I did. Uh, so, but but after then, it has a very unique layout. It has this twisted ejector airtime hill, and then it has some twists and turns, some more airtime, and then it has its big turnaround and a floater hill, which I haven't built yet in the video, but you'll see that. Uh, it's it's a very unique layout, I think, but I tried to make it still feel like uh, like. I wanted to I wanted to move like an actual intimate prefab would uh, while still keeping my own ideas I actually drew the layout of this or the idea for it on a piece of paper again uh, at work <laughs> because uh, I got a job now and I can do whatever I want while doing my job which is pretty nice so I can draw and think and stuff and that's pretty nice um, but anyway I also want to talk about some other things because Right now, we're in a time of year where a lot of new roller coasters are being announced for next year. We know all about the Sea. Well, we, sorry, we don't know all about it, but we, we know that all Sea World parks are getting a roller coaster next year. We know about some um, Six Flags speculations. We know a lot, a lot about the Cedar Fair stuff and some stuff in Europe and probably Asia as well. Uh, we know a lot of stuff, and we don't like. There's a lot of stuff we don't know. Essentially, uh, when it comes to Europe we're getting Sadra we recently got the POV for that coaster which is uh, in my mind probably the best coaster in Europe if not the world this ride I'm not gonna show uh, show all of it I was I'm, look at this clip this ride looks absolutely insane Sadra looks nuts and I, it, it 
wow. <laughs> and then, I mean, I'm really excited for it. It should have just opened, I believe it opened like uh, yesterday or two days ago. Um, so, I mean, I, I really want to write this. I've never been on an RMC, uh, as I've said several times. But I think this might be, like, besides from Steel Vengeance, this is the one I want to write the most. And also, another coaster that recently got announced was Orion in King's Island, which is, uh, which is going to be the seventh Giga coaster and the uh, third BNM Giga. And a lot of people have mixed opinions on it. A lot of people say, oh, it's short, oh, it looks garbage. W why? Why does it look garbage to you? The I think Orion looks like an absolutely incredible ride. This coaster looks mad. Yes, sure, it looks a little short, but it looks like it's going to be an amazing experience overall. And that's what it's all about. It doesn't have to be... I think a lot of people wanted it to beat Fury 325 and that's just crazy that some people expect that because that's such a, a high tier wish. I mean, obviously it's not going to do that. That's not what they went after. They want it to be their own thing and I think Orion looks great. I also want to point out some things. Uh, a lot of people are getting a lot of information wrong about this coaster. Uh, about some of the elements, they're saying they're something that they're not. I, I might make a video on this, uh, well in fact I am probably going to make a video on this. I usually don't make videos on new coasters that are outside of Denmark, but I'm, I really want to make a video on Orion, just because a lot of people are not, are getting a lot of things wrong. I'm not saying I'm the genius here, but s still, uh, just as an example, uh, the first element after the drop is a huge bank turn. Everyone, everyone says this is a wave turn and it's gonna give airtime. It's not a wave turn. It's far from it. It is not a wave turn at all. A wave turn is uh, basically a 90 degree or around 90 plus minus, give or take, I suppose. Uh, and a banked turn, a highly banked turn, which goes the opposite direction of the direction that it's pointed towards. So basically, it's a hill banked at 90 degrees, and it turns, like if it's banked to the left, it turns towards the right. Orion's turn does not do that. It banks towards the left, and it very clearly turns towards the, like it banks towards the left, and very clearly turns towards the left as well. This is not a, an, a, a wave turn and I think a lot of people by now expect this to be like the best part of the ride and for it to give a lot of air time. It's not. You're gonna be disappointed because this is not gonna give air time. Look at it. It turns towards the left. You're not being pushed out of your seat. You're actually being pushed more in your seat. You're getting one point something. Well, I'm not saying the G's because you're still hanging on the side. But again, just the reason it's 90 degrees like that is because it is so high up. It is going downwards, so you're being pushed to the right while still being slow. So you're being, so there's balance between the hang time and the lateral force, meaning you're probably not going to feel any lateral force. Probably not any force in this turn at all. This is probably going to be a pretty forceless element that is not a wave turn and not and it's not going to give air time. It's just going to be a cool sensation, kind of like Blue Fire's first over or underbanked or whatever turn. I would say overbanked. So that that's just my little rant here. I uh, please if you made it this far in the video, let me know if you want me to make a complete analysis or something about Orion uh, and if not a single person comments on this video saying that they want that, I'm probably not going to do it. Uh, I, but if you want me to uh, see a full, if you want to see a full video about me talking about Orion, please let me know or Satra for that matter. But I can't give that much about Satra because I have a little more experience with the B and M hyper coaster model, which is the model that Orion is, than the RMCs because I've never been on an RMC. But I have ridden a B and M hyper, uh, which is Silver Star in Europa Park which I wrote uh, <laughs> this last month, and it was amazing. Uh, a lot of people say uh, BNM Hypers are kind of, like, they're forceless and they're not that good. I thought uh, Silver Star was very good. I can see why a lot of people might not be that impressed because it's floater airtime, but I really liked it. I thought it was a fun ride. I thought it was an awesome sensation you got for, uh, you got on it. And it was, it was simply a, a great experience. Uh, I really want Denmark to get something big very soon because we're probably not gonna get anything big. Uh, I expect Jur Summerland to get something cool next year, but we have no idea what. But I hope they get a big coaster because we haven't gotten a big coaster uh, 
Oh, well, that's not, we have gotten a big coaster recently, Denmark, but not a big thrill coaster in a long time. So that's kind of what I'm hoping. But anyway, that has been it for today's building video. I really hope you enjoyed and let me know if you were excited to see the POV of this intimate prefabricated wooden coaster. And let me know what you think about Orion in the comments below, uh, down below and Sator as well. Otherwise, it has been Northern Rides and I hope you all keep on riding.